is the coronavirus, a judgment from God, upon the world? I am going to let you make that judgment, for yourself. But before you do, I will give you a comparison to look at, from the book of Joel, to help you make your decision. So let's get started. Scripture says, The word of the Lord that came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. God has sent his prophet Joel to the nation of Israel, and he said this to the people. Listen up. Hear what God is saying. You old men, and every resident in the land, bend your ears and hear the word of the Lord. Then God said, Hath this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? What does the word, this, have reference to? Something out of the ordinary happened. And God wanted to bring it to their attention, so they would understand, and not miss the meaning behind the happening. Continuing, God says this, about that thing which happened. Tell ye your children of it and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. So this thing that happened was so important to the understanding of that nation, that he instructed them to tell it to their children, and the children should tell it to their children, for the knowledge to all their generations. And continuing, he finally names that thing, saying, That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten, and that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. There was a plague of locust that came upon the nation of Israel and destroyed their crops, which left the nation with scarcely any food. This swarm was so great that it placed the nation in dire circumstances, and God wanted them to know how great a danger this was to the people. He began to distinguish this plague of locust from any other plague that preceded it, saying, Awake ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. God is saying, All you who are preoccupied with the cares of this world, and blinded by the same, wake up and see what is happening around you, for that next drink that you so heavily depend upon, will not be forthcoming, but has been taken away from you, and now what will you do, but howl and weep, for today, in your stupor, your way of life has changed. For a nation has come up upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. How is it that God began speaking of a plague of locusts that invaded the land, and now is speaking of a strong nation without number that comes against the land, with the ferocity of the teeth of a great lion? It is because he is comparing the plague of locusts, with the invasion of a nation upon the land, which will be so fierce that it will leave the land void, as the remains of a plague of locusts. Here, God is actually hinting to Israel, about her invasion by the nations, during the day of the Lord. Continuing. He hath laid my vine waste, and barked my fig tree. He hath made it clean bare, and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. It says, he, referring to the nation of locust. They spoiled the grape vines, and they ate the bark off of the fig tree, making her body and branches white. Then God told them what to do, to save their lives from this famine, saying, Lament like a virgin, girded with sackcloth for the husband of her youth. Okay, let's step back and look at this again. From out of nowhere, there came a plague of locusts that up until that day, was like no other. It was so severe that the fathers, and the forefathers had never seen anything like it. Therefore, they were told to tell their children, and their children's children's, and their generations about it. 
it was brought upon this people by God to cause them to repent and turn away from their sins. And in case they did not understand why the plague was given, God told them how to receive it, by mourning in sackcloth before the Lord in a true repentance, as a virgin whose husband has died. Can you see how this compares to the coronavirus? It is something that came upon the world suddenly, and crippled the world, and changed it from as we know it. But did we see this as a judgment from God? Or have we simply taken it to be a mistake of men? Are we also like the drunkard, who is so occupied with the things of the world, that we are asleep and blind to the moving of God in the earth? Remember, it was a mistake of man in the garden, that changed the world as they knew it. And that same mistake, God used as a judgment to curse the earth, and man, and animals, which is still in motion until this very day. Moving on. Scripture says, The meat offering and the drink offering is cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests the Lord's ministers mourn. This is so interesting, and shows how deeply the plague of locusts affected everyday life. Even unto the performance of the services done in the temple. It said the meat offering, and the drink offering was stopped in the temple service, and the priest mourned because of it. Do you know how serious this was for the nation of Israel? The priest had to offer a lamb, along with a meat and drink offering every day, to keep the people in a right relationship with God. When this was no longer possible, due to the famine created by the locust, every individual's fellowship with God was broken, until such time that these things were reinstituted. Now, the meal offering consisted of the following. Wheat that was beaten into flour. Olives that were made into oil. And grapes that were made into wine. But the locust ate the wheat so no flour could be made. And the locust ate the olive trees so no olive oil could be made. And the locust ate the grape vines so no wine could be made. These things were used in the temple worship, and were discontinued because of the locust, and thrust the temple priest, and the worshippers of God into a broken fellowship with him. And for this God set to wail and mourn in sackcloth before him, and in time, if this was a true repentance, he would put things back in order. Isn't this the same thing that has happened to our church worship services today? Because of the coronavirus all church services were stopped, and the pastors and the parishioners were separated from God as an assembly. Even the Holy Communion that is symbolic of our right fellowship with God was put on pause, also making our worship of God unpleasing to Him, for the forsaking of ourselves with one another. Back then, God used locusts to judge His people and to turn them away from sin and back to Himself. Today, He has used a virus to do that same thing. But do we recognize this as the hand of God moving us to turn back to Himself? Or do we see this as a run-of-the-mill virus, which is no better or no worse than any other virus. Remember, how we respond to this warning, will determine the severity of the next one that will come. How do the beasts groan? The herds of the cattle are perplexed because they've no pasture, yea, the flocks of sheep are made desolate. The locusts did a number on the fields and the pastures, leaving the cattle and the sheep with nothing to graze upon. Imagine that. The animals are subject to the ailments of men, and must suffer for no fault of their own, but are become participants because of the sinfulness of men. One of the main functions of the temple priest is to sacrifice a male lamb without spot or blemish before the Lord. Now that the locust has eaten up the pastures leaving the sheep with little or no food, this also makes it difficult for the priest to find a strong lamb without spot or blemish, since most of the livestock is now sickly and starving. Do you see that the invasion of the locust, was able to stop not only the economy of the nation of Israel, but also its religious services. God got their attention in every area of life, to call them back to repentance. The coronavirus is like no other virus thus far known to our fathers, and their forefathers. No virus in modern times have closed down the economies, and the churches of the entire world, and all at the same time. 
Sounds like a repeat of what happened to the nation of Israel in Joel's day. So I ask you. Do you think the coronavirus is a judgment from God upon the whole earth to bring us back to himself? Or is this simply a birth pain alerting us to the coming of the great tribulation period? How would you answer that question? With Joel as your reference point, I leave you to ponder these things. In closing. I want to mention that I received my understanding for the book of Joel, from a pastor on YouTube named Mario Escobedo, and I will leave the link below. He has a very informative series on Joel that is very easy to understand, and I recommend you go there and receive it. If this study was helpful to you, and you wish to become a child of God to unlock the secrets in His Word, tell God. I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God. I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God. I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God. I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then now are you a child of God, and prepared to know the mysteries of his kingdom. Thanks for watching. In ancient times, God used a plague of locusts to shut down the nation of Israel's economy and religious center. Today, God has used the coronavirus to shut down the world's economy and the churches of worship. In the case of Israel, it was a judgment from God. Is it a judgment from God in our case? If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Awake, ye drunkards, and weep and howl, all ye drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it is cut off from your mouth. For a nation is come up upon my land, strong, and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion, and he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. Amen.